from today's gospel. He has done everything well. He even makes the deaf to hear and the mute to speak. Please pray with me. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of all of our hearts be always acceptable in thy sight. O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Seeing, hearing, and reading the news right now can be an overwhelming experience. Disease, death, economic downturn, abuse of power, social unrest, wars and rumors of wars are all happening before our eyes. And if we didn't have enough to worry about, it's hurricane season. It's normal to worry. But it can very easily turn into what psychologists call catastrophic thinking, where you can only think of worst-case scenarios, many of which are completely irrational. And you just can't stop. Widespread anxiety, fear, and worry about worst-case scenarios is as old as humanity itself. Ever since sin and death entered the world, we know that things are not the way that they're supposed to be, and we long for something better. This is where the Old Testament prophets are especially helpful for us, and specifically in regards to today's gospel lesson, the prophet Isaiah. The prophet who St. Mark has in the back of his mind as he tells us this story about Jesus and these miraculous healings. You see, in the 35th chapter, the prophet Isaiah spoke to those in captivity in Babylon. God's people were exiled, separated from their home. He spoke of a time when they would be set free. But not only set free, brought to a place with streams in the desert. A place where the land would be healed. And not only the land, but they themselves would be healed also. A place where there was no need for anxiety or fear. Can you imagine? Isaiah goes on to say, God will come and save you. Then the eyes of the blind shall be opened, and the ears of the deaf unstopped. Then shall the lame man leap like a deer, and the tongue of the dumb sing for joy. In a sense, the first part of this prophecy was fulfilled when God's people returned from exile to the land that God had given them. God had saved them. He had set them free. But many in Jesus' day believed that God's people were still in exile, that God's promised restoration had not yet fully come. That hope, that eager expectation of restoration is what we see in today's gospel lesson from the gospel of Mark, where we see in the ministry of Jesus the fulfillment of Isaiah's prophecy. So Jesus is leaving the coast of Tyre and Sidon, and eventually he made his way to the Decapolis. Now the Decapolis is a name for a group of ten cities that went from Damascus in the north to Philadelphia in the south. And it is that region in which our story takes place. We learn in the second half of the story that a man is deaf and has difficulty speaking and is brought to Jesus. The text does not tell us exactly who brought the man, but I think it's safe to assume that it was likely close friends or relatives who desired to see their friend healed. Surely they had heard of Jesus' teaching and miracles and so they asked Jesus to pray for him, to heal him. And what is so interesting is the way in which Jesus decides to heal him. First, he takes him away from the crowd, so it's just him and the man. And he could have simply spoken the words and healed the man, which he had done in the past. But instead, Jesus touches two places that need healing. He chose to use outward signs to confer his healing presence, which he still does today in the sacraments. First, by putting his finger 
into the man's ears. And second, Jesus spits into his hand and touches the man's tongue. Talk about social distancing. Jesus then looks up to heaven, and then he sighs. Now this is interesting. Mark is the shortest by far of all the Gospels. He doesn't waste any space. So when Mark goes out of his way to give us a detail, we should slow down, pay attention, and ask, why? So, why does Jesus sigh? I would submit to you that Jesus' sigh is his heartache, his pain in seeing the ravages of sin, disease, and death on God's good world. We see in this sigh his desire and determination to fulfill his mission, which we saw outlined in Isaiah's prophecy, that the deaf would hear and that the mute would speak. If you ever have moments when you are overwhelmed with the pain and suffering in the world, know that Jesus sees you. He understands. He sighs with you. And in addition to sighing, Jesus looks up to heaven. And we see here Jesus' dependence on his heavenly Father and his attitude of humble prayer. But Jesus doesn't stop at sighing or even at prayer. He moves from prayer into action. He speaks. He acts. And so he says to the man, Ephatha, be opened. And immediately, one of St. Mark's favorite words, the man's ears are opened, and he could hear. And his tongue was loosed, and he could speak clearly. And everyone is amazed. But perhaps just as surprisingly, Jesus tells the people not to tell anyone what they've just seen. But the more he asks them not to tell, the more they announce Jesus' healing power to others. And I think the reason for that is that Jesus doesn't want others to be the interpreters of his ministry. There's a danger that his mission will be misunderstood. And Jesus wants to be able to announce the kingdom of God in all of its fullness and to fulfill his mission, a mission that is incomplete without his cross and resurrection. Now, Mark goes on to give us more detail. He says that the people were astonished beyond measure, and they said of Jesus, he has done all things well. And that phrase, all things well, is an echo. It's an allusion back to Genesis 1, to the creation of the world. And God saw everything that he had made, and behold, it was very good. God's plan, Jesus' mission, was to bring back creation, including you and me, back to that state of very good, for all things to be well, a world in which there is no more sin, suffering, and death, no more abuse of power, a place where all men and women are created in the image of God and treated truly equally, a place where disease does not exist and every tear is wiped from our eyes, the complete removal of fear, anxiety, and the possibility of catastrophe. At the end of Isaiah's vision, he says, And the ransomed of the Lord shall return and come to Zion with songs and everlasting joy shall be upon their heads. They shall obtain joy and gladness and sorrow and sighing shall flee away. Today's lesson from Mark gives us a glimpse of that restoration, this unnamed man's healing, the return of his sight and his speech is a picture, it's a snapshot 
of what God promises to do to the entire creation, including you and me. With Jesus, let us sigh at the brokenness of the world, both outside of us and within us. Let us look to heaven to pray for God's kingdom to come and God's will to be done on earth as it is in heaven. And let us trust that the same Jesus who healed back then will make all things new, trusting that his kingdom will indeed come and that in Christ one day sorrow and sighing shall flee away.